Right, we'll look at electric motors and loudspeakers in this video, starting with an electric motor. So here I've got a simplified diagram of an electric motor, okay? It consists of a north pole and a south pole, um, and then the magnetic field is going to form between them. And then we've got inside this magnetic field, we've put a loop of wire, okay? An electric motor, it rotates, um, and it's this loop of wire that will rotate, okay? This loop of wire will rotate. Well, let's figure out then the direction of rotation. So we can figure out the direction of rotation because we can use Fleming's left hand rule again, okay? So let's do that. Let's do Fleming's left hand rule and we're going to work it out for just the red half here, the red side of the wire. So let's first put the direction of the current in. So the current goes from positive to negative. So I'm going to put my positive to negative arrows in. There we go, that way around. And then it's going to come back this way. So positive to negative. Now let's firstly point our first finger in the direction of the field from north to south. So first finger points that way. Uh, middle finger in the direction of the current. So a middle finger that way, and then we should have a force pointing upwards. So our force thumb will point upwards on this red half here. So we'll have a force upwards there. Okay, now let's do the same thing on the orange side. So this time, force first finger in the direction of the field, north to south. Um, now this time the middle finger should be pointing in the opposite direction, which means your thumb is also going to be pointing in the opposite direction. It should be pointing down. So you've got a force on the other side downwards, okay? Now let's, let's see downwards there. So let's uh, so, so let's let's see what's going to happen here. Now if we've got a force on the right acting up, if we've got a force on the left acting downwards, then that's going to cause a rotation about this axis here, okay? Um, my diagram's got a little bit messy, but you should be able to see if we've got a force on the right acting up and a force on the left acting down, then we should get an anti-clockwise um, direction of rotation there. Okay, so it'll rotate anti-clockwise. Right, now you might have noticed a device here. Okay, this is called a split ring commutator. Okay, now why do we need that? Well, have a look. So we can see here the direction of rotation. It's going anti-clockwise. Um, and when you get to the bottom here, this, this one here, where it's rotated half a turn, uh, the, we need to swap the contacts over. Okay, we need to swap the contacts over um, so that the current will flow the correct way around so that it doesn't oppose the direction of rotation. Okay, so the split ring commutator is just a very clever way of swapping over those contacts every half a turn. Yeah, we need to do that because we need to carry, we need to keep the current flowing the same way around this loop here. You can see at the bottom here if it was if it was if it was still flowing from well this one's flowing from red to orange. If it was still flowing from red to orange, then the current will now be flowing that way, which is not good. We don't want that because that will oppose the direction of rotation. So we need to swap the contacts over so that the current will carry on flowing from orange to red like that. Okay, and that's what the commutator does. It just swaps the contacts over every half a turn to make sure the motor can continue to rotate. Okay, now there are, there are two ways that we can change the direction of rotation. We can either swap over the magnetic field or we can swap over, uh, we can change the direction of the current. Okay. Okay, so we can change the direction of the rotation just by changing the direction of the magnetic field, swapping the north and south poles over, or we can change the direction of the current, just swap the swap the cell over. Okay, just change its direction. Right, let's have a look at loudspeakers then. So loudspeakers work in a similar way. We've got two, we've got the north poles of a magnet surrounding the south pole of a magnet, and then we've got the south pole pole of the magnet connected up to this uh, paper speaker cone. Okay, and if you've ever seen a, a speaker working, you'll see that this paper speaker cone actually vibrates. And it's that vibration of the speaker cone that's going to cause pressure waves in the air, which we will interpret as sound. Okay, now we've also got the south pole of a magnet connected up to the, uh, this orange coil here. Okay, so this orange coil is actually physically attached to the south pole of the magnet. Now, if we pass a signal through that, um, if we pass a signal through that, that orange coil, it will experience a force. If we pass a current through it, it will experience a force, okay? Um, and that force is going to push the paper cone outwards. If we then change the direction of the current the other way, then it will pull it back inwards again, okay?
okay so the force will just change direction um, and that's what we can do we can send a signal uh, through that through that uh, orange coil and the signal will vary its direction and its uh, the size of the current as well and that's going to change how much it vibrates and in what direction it vibrates and that's how a speaker comb works yeah it's just a an orange well it's just a uh, it's just a coil of wire attached to a paper cone inside a magnetic field send a signal through there it will vibrate the speaker cone which will vibrate the air or cause pressure waves in the air which we can pick up as sound waves okay uh, i will see you in the next video